David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I don't have one or two or three or four pens to show you. I have five. I have five different versions of a fairly new entry-level pen from Faber-Castell called the Hexo, which I believe is their lowest price pen that they offer. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Faber-Castell Hexo, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks from Faber-Castell for providing these pens you will see today for review and to give away to you. Um, I have four to give away. Two fountain pens, a rollerball, and a ballpoint. Stay tuned to the end of the review where I will let you know what you can do to potentially make one of those pens your own. The pen arrives in this simple box and inside we have a pen. This is the Faber-Castell Hexo. Um, the barrel is made from a lightweight aluminum and the cap is plastic. Um, the materials feel fairly similar. Um, it's tough to feel the difference in materials, though the barrel is slightly cooler. Um, the cap does have a UPC sticker. Um, I'm assuming that that's so that they could also sell these pens in a display without their boxes, similar to how you see Lamy's sometimes in stores. Um, the barrel and cap have a faceted hexagonal design. Um, it's a nice design element, which also serves to prevent the pen from rolling across a table when not posted or capped. Um, there are three different models. There is the silver, which has a silver clip and the Faber-Castell logo printed on the barrel in black. There is the black model with a black clip and the logo is a silver gray. And then there is the rose model with a black clip. And the logo is, I believe, the same color as the black model, but with the lighter barrel material, it gives it a more subtle look. With this logo being printed here on the barrel, uh, well, I haven't tested it over time, uh, I think there would be uh, the possibility that over time you might see some wear and tear on that. On the end of the cap, it is rounded and embossed with the Faber-Castell Jousting Knight logo. Uh, just a side note about that logo, the two knights are not fighting with lances, they're each holding pencils. The uh, A.W. Faber pencil of Faber-Castell is the oldest brand name pencil continuously sold in the U.S., having begun its sales back in 1870. Um, I like the design of this clip. Uh, it's thin, but rather wide. Uh, it's a bit of a different design. Uh, I feel it matches the overall aesthetics of this pen uh, well, and it functions well in addition to that. Uh, the cap is straight. Uh, there is no cap band, and there is a very small step down to the barrel, which tapers down at an even angle until you reach the end of the barrel, which is rounded. The cap snaps off, and it's a rather satisfying snap. Uh, one of the design elements I like about this pen is found on the inside of the cap. You can see here the groove design. What this does is when you are capping the pen, it smoothly forces the facets on the cap into alignment with those on the barrel. I appreciate attention to detail like that. Now, while it doesn't guarantee the clip will be aligned with the facet, uh, the facet with the logo on it, you'll have to manage that alignment on your own. Uh, once you remove the cap, uh, what you will find is a rather small stainless steel nib. On this silver model, the nib is silver colored. On the other two models, the black and rose, the nibs are black. I believe this is the same type of nib Faber-Castell previously used on the Rit Ink model. Uh, that was the white model with a big fingerprint on the barrel. It is not the same nib which can be found on the Loom. That nib is larger and is one of my absolute favorite stainless steel nibs. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but I find the nib on the Hexo to be decent. Uh, it does have a bit of what I would describe as nib drag to it. It can feel like writing a little bit with an unsharpened pencil. It performs well, but it is not as glorious as I find the, the Loom nib to be. And here is a look at the plastic feed. The section is a dark smoke, somewhat translucent plastic, uh, begins with a flare and then tapers up at an even angle. Uh, since this has a snap cap, there are no threads, just some raised lines which help guide the barrel through those alignment grooves I shared earlier and a very small step up to the barrel. 
The Hexoak is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, one of which is provided, and a converter is not provided. This was a spare international that I had on hand. Uh, the barrel is long enough for you to store a spare cartridge behind the one that you have loaded into the section, but personally, I, I really never like to do that. While it's nice to have a spare, I'm not fond of having the extra cartridge kind of rattling around the inside of the barrel as I'm using the pen. Uh, while there is an interior plastic sleeve on this aluminum barrel, from what I can tell, there is a bit of exposed metal at the very back, so I wouldn't recommend eye-dropping this pen. Uh, something I do like about the design of this pen, it's a small thing, but when you are screwing the barrel back on, for the last quarter turn, uh, there is a little nub on the inside of the barrel, which comes in contact with this cutout on the section. When they come in contact with each other, this serves to kind of lock the barrel in place in order to prevent it from accidentally coming unscrewed. I wish more companies incorporated a design like that. I'm not sure how it's going to hold up over time, but I like the concept and in my limited testing, it functions very well. Now, finding a retailer for this pen might take a bit of internet searching. At the present time, there's not a lot of prominent retailers carrying this model. I found the pen selling in the $34 to $40 range. Uh, the Hexo is priced in the same range as the Lamy Safari and sometimes the All Star. Uh, while there is a lot to like about the Hexo, I'm not sure it offers more than either of the Lamy's in regard to an entry level pen. Uh, it's also close to the price of the Faber Castell Loom. Uh, I am a big fan of the Loom, especially the Dip. Uh, while the section on the Loom could be a bit polarizing, I would rank it above the Hexo as well. However, if you already own some of the Lamy's and a Loom and are looking to expand your collection, then the Hexo would be a nice complement in the price range. Okay. In regard to the giveaway, I have four pens to give away. Uh, two fountain pens, a rollerball, and a ballpoint. So this is what I will do. If you would like the opportunity to win one of the fountain pens, you need to be a subscriber to this YouTube channel and then leave a comment on the, this video below in YouTube. If you would care to receive either the rollerball or the ballpoint, then leave a comment on the recent photo of the Hexo on my Instagram feed. Uh, feel free to leave comments in both places in order to double your chances of walking away with a prize. Uh, 72 hours from when I post this review, I will randomly select four winners and I will reply to your comment with instructions on how to claim your prize. Good luck to you all. Okay, so now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, a writing sample, and I'll give you a closer look at the rollerball and ballpoint designs. some size comparisons for the Faber-Castell Hexo. Uh, just to show them again, here is the black model, uh, and then here is the rose model, and then here is it in comparison to a loom. Here it is in comparison with a Lamy All-Star. And then finally, I wanted to show you the ballpoint and the rollerball. This is the rollerball. The rollerball looks exactly like the uh, fountain pen, but you can see it is a rollerball. And then this is the ballpoint. And the ballpoint has a significantly different design. Uh, it has a twist to operate design. Uh, it has the same clip, the same hexagonal design, but there is no cap to it. And that is what the ballpoint looks like. In regard to uncapped comparisons, here it is with the All-Star. And here it is with the loom. So here we go with the writing sample for the Faber-Castell Hexo. This is a medium stainless steel nib. Uh, I believe that these are available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And the ink that I'm using today is Faber-Castell, or actually Groff von Faber-Castell. Surf Blue. 
Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a kind of a lighter blue. I typically like my blues a little bit darker, but it is something that I think that looks nice, especially if you have a nice wet and juicy pen. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Arushizuku Amairo, which is a little bit more dark, uh, as well as Franklin Kristoff Spanish Blue, which again is a little bit more saturated. But the Surf Blue is still a nice ink. And I do like the Graf von Faber-Castell uh, bottles. These are 75 milliliter. They're very sturdy bottles and uh, and look nice. So I do like those bottles of ink. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, as I mentioned, in the review, um, this nib, you know, it isn't quite as glorious as the Loom nib. Uh, I do find that it has a little bit of drag to it, uh, kind of like writing with a, a bit of an unsharpened pencil, um, but it is nice. Uh, it does have a decent ink flow to it, and in regard to reverse writing, It is rather sharp and doesn't necessarily do the greatest job of that in regard to some fast writing though. There's no issue with the feed keeping up. So there we have the Faber-Castell Hexo. Uh, as I mentioned, if you're looking for an alternative to uh, things like the Lama, Saf Lama Safari or the All Star or a Faber-Castell Loom, then the Hexo is something that you'll want to check out. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.